So I'm sure a lot of people that watch this channel are familiar with bug bounties. They see researchers getting paid ten thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars for super critical findings, right? Well, let's just say there is a way from for bug bounties to make up to ten million dollars for a single finding. And if that sounds too good to be true, too crazy, I'm definitely with you there. That is pretty insane, but it's definitely possible. And there's a lot of people that are making several million, they've already made several million dollars from a single finding, from a single bug. So let's just take a look at that, deep dive into that in this video. And by the way, along your pen testing journey, if you're trying to do bug bounties along the way, that's totally super viable path to get into cybersecurity. Personally, I'm not a huge bug bounty guy myself, but let me just say that there's definitely a path that can be constructed to you know, to fit the individual that is into bug bounties that wants to use that as part of their portfolio and building themselves up and building up their resume in order to get a job in this field. But eventually down the line in that process, you're going to be ready for job interviews. So definitely want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace that interview. You can find that right down in the description below absolutely for free. But let's just get right into it. I'm here on a site called immunify.com. And right now on the Twitter space, everyone is just freaking out about web three bug bounties, right? That's been a huge, huge thing. And uh, if you're not too familiar with web three, I'll give you a short little synopsis of it. Essentially, it is the new internet, um, the future of the internet, a lot of people would say, where we're basically leveraging um, blockchain. Um, so we're going to have a decentralized type of internet. And what people call Web 2.0 is the the web that, you, that we're all familiar with now, the, the web as it currently is. This is like kind of the new frontier here, Web 3. It's blockchain-based, decentralized type of applications and, you know, a whole new internet, basically. Now... These are based on like, uh, you know, like I said, cryptocurrency, you know, blockchain and those kind of what I'll call protocols, right? Because not everything here is a cryptocurrency. Some of these things are crypto exchanges, DeFi, you know, all kinds of different stuff, right? Some of them are just tokens. So it really, it really depends here. Let's just jump into what is available on this craziness, right? You can make up to $10 million dollars on some of these bounties. It's it's actually pretty insane. And even the lower paying ones, you're still looking over a million dollars at for a critical, keep in mind, this is rewards up to, right? Um, but just looking through this list, I can tell you as someone who's been involved in the crypto space in the last few years, a lot of these are pretty big names in the industry, like MakerDAO, one of the largest DeFi platforms. Um, you got Olympus, DAO, um, you have the Graph, Let's see, multi chain, some polka dot related stuff, right? Akala, all that sushi swap. These are these are huge names. And if we just go into into one of these, right? Like let's just go into Akala. This part is will probably be pretty familiar to you guys if you ever looked at um bounties on uh sites like Hacker One and Bug Crowd. And by the way, that's basically what Immunify is. You know, just like you have for web 2.0, you have sites like Bug Crowd, Hacker One, Integrity. This is essentially a bug bounty platform for Web3. So Akala, this is a um, this is one of the projects that's on the Polkadot uh, Polkadot network. But you know, you see here they have you know their focus areas with the the kind of findings. These are the findings that you would probably get paid the most for. Essentially, this is what's most important to them. So good information. You definitely always want to read through this. And obviously, if you're experienced with bug bounties you understand that this is an important section here, all these, all this information. You want to read through all of it carefully if it's the program that you're going to hack on, right? And it even breaks down the rewards by threat level. So as you see here, if you find a critical, that's a million dollar payout, life-changing money for a lot of people, right? And uh, if you get it high, that's 50,000. So quite a huge discrepancy there, but still 50,000, 10,000, that's, that's nothing to, uh, to scoff at either. And of course, you have what assets are in scope, really important to note. And also the out of scope stuff, right? Because you want to definitely make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom, read it all. That way you can make sure that you're not doing anything um, that you're not supposed to be doing, right? But here's the nice thing about a lot of these uh, Web3 protocols is that most of the projects are open source. That's a huge 
huge thing in this community is open source projects. So most of the time, and, and there's a reason for that. You're going to need that in order to find these types of vulnerabilities most of the time. Um, but yeah, like this one, Akala, for example, they have a GitHub page right here. They linked it. So we can just go here and we can start looking into the code. Now, this is a Rust-based project. So a lot of people that are jumping into this space are focused on Solidity and stuff like that because most of these protocols are built on top of Ethereum and Ethereum uses the Solidity language uh, to program. You can build coins on top of that, ERC-20 tokens as they call them uh, most of the time. So let's see if I, if I find like one such example of that, like if I just scroll up here, um, if I go to, I'm going to see one that I, I recognize. This is like a layer two polygon is. But yeah, if I go to like Sushi Swap, for example, this is a uh, an actual exchange, like a, a decentralized exchange. But they, uh, if we go down to their code base, right, their GitHub repository, we can take a look and we see some solidity on the Bento Box program they have within there. And then from there, yeah, if you're familiar with... Uh, if you're familiar with Solidity, then you can start looking through the uh, the source code and finding vulnerabilities within it and stuff like that. Obviously, there's a whole huge skill set to this that you're going to want to learn before you just jump right into this because this could be pretty intimidating and pretty tough right off the bat. But here's something to keep in mind, right? If you've ever went for, you know, if you've ever participated on these bug bounty platforms before, like I said, HackerOne, Bug Crowd, Integrity, etc., and you were a bit discouraged by the fact that it seemed like there was so many eyes on everything you're looking at. It was so hard to find something new because so many people are hacking on these platforms. What I can say is that this Web3 stuff is a whole nother beast. It's completely, in a lot of regards, like, yeah, there will be some similar vulnerabilities you can find on the websites of these Web3 protocols, right? Because they all have their own websites as well, by the way. So if I go to something like... Uh, let me just let me just go back here just to just to showcase this to you real quick. We go sushi.com, right? Obviously on their site, you know, you might be able to find like some cross-site scripting or something smaller here and there, or maybe even something serious. Who knows, right? You could find something on there. So in that case, yeah, there are those traditional web two vulnerabilities you could see there as well. But if you really want to find a lot of the stuff that they're going to consider really, really huge. A lot of the stuff requires learning about Solidity as a programming language and the vulnerabilities just come up in that constantly. Here's the thing. Very few people, and here's the thing though, very few people have an understanding of how to develop smart contracts, how to develop in Solidity or Rust and you know develop smart contracts in these languages, let alone be able to security test them, right? So, if you understand smart contract security, then you are very few and far between. There's going to be way less people right now. You know, you're very. If you're watching this video, most likely, you know, you're you're getting in extremely early, unless you're watching this ten, like ten years from now or something, right? But if you're watching this anywhere close to the time that it came out, you are very much on the ground floor with this stuff. The competition is very low, what much lower than the Web two bug bounty sites are. So there's a huge opportunity there as well. If you're going to look into some of the Rust based ones, say you, you know, maybe you already are pretty solid at Rust programming. Maybe that's something that you've learned, a skill set you've picked up along the way. Maybe you want to look into these Rust based chains. Um, the ones, you know, like projects like Akala and um, the Polkadot ones as well. Anything that's not based off of Ethereum, you could look into those as well. And if you think about it, a lot of people flooding into the space right now, they're focusing on Solidity. They're focusing on the Ethereum-based protocols um, because that's what most of them are. But if you do happen to know Rust, I almost could guarantee you that less people are have an understanding and have the capability of finding vulnerabilities in the Rust-based chains and things like that. So huge, huge opportunities here. There could be, you know, look, look at all these programs here and all the money up for grabs. There could very well be several vulnerabilities out there just waiting for you to find them, waiting for you to cash in on them. So definitely a very lucrative thing to get into right now. And I think that's why there's been so much buzz about this lately. But make no mistake, it does take a long time to, it does take a little while, let's say, to get up to speed from zero to be able to 
actually be able to find these vulnerabilities. I would say the first step is to get familiar with, you know, either Solidity or Rust. I would say if you're just starting out, just get familiar with Solidity, build some smart contracts and things like that. And then also check out my video playlist that I did back in the day on, um, I, I covered basically the top, you know, at the time, which were the top 16 vulnerabilities in smart contracts. And let me just say that the vast majority of those are still present today and very prevalent today as well. So go ahead and check out that video. I'll link it on the screen right now and uh, just get right into learning this stuff. And once you've done that, there are some CTFs and things like that that you can do as a kind of intermediary step before you just jump into this, unless you want to just throw yourself in the deep end. I recommend checking out some of those CTFs. But yeah, I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.